Nordquist. We're going to be doing a short experiment here to demonstrate the use of an ND egg. I've asked Dr. John Lynn to come and help me with this demonstration. What we're going to do is we're going to test to see if the ND egg uh, beam can go through the cover slip in the slide of a, a sample so that we can eliminate that as a possibility of error. Then we're actually going to try to kill spirochetes that are on a microscopic slide. Then we're going to do a patient treatment and check your gingival sulcus after we did the treatment to see if there are any live spirochetes. Then we'll do a summation. Okay, let's get going. Okay, this is ND YAG, and what we're doing is we're testing to make sure that the beam will go through the cover slip and the slide and burn off the black uh, writing on that uh, carpio anesthetic that's underneath. So go ahead and run it and we'll see. As you can see, it's taking off the black writing through the cover slip and the slide, so we know that the, the energy is actually transmitted through the glass. These are the spirochetes that we're trying to kill through the cover slip. And as you see, there's quite a few of them. They're kind of um, the medium-sized spirochetes. And what we're going to do is uh, run the ND YAG beam over this section of the slide and then we'll come back and see if we did any damage to them. Okay, now we're going to zap. We're going to cover quite an area of that air, the uh, slide just to make sure that we get as close to the center of that as possible so that we kill as many as possible. Even though that beam is very small, we're running it back and forth several times. Now we see the only change from the time that we laze these things until now is they seem to be a little more excited and they're moving around a little faster. It could be the medium was warmed up slightly by the ND YAG beam, but as you can see, they're pretty transparent to the ND YAG. So that we can, if they're pigmented, they should be dead. If they're not pigmented and transparent to this, to the ND YAG, then there won't be any change. The YAG uh, laser light is at 1064 nanometers. It is highly absorbed by darkly black pigmented materials. Anything that's not will not absorb it, and hence you will not get any, uh, any results. ND YAG, um, the laser light works in the following. The light energy um, photo gets converted to thermal, and that essentially cooks the bug from inside out physically. So whether the bug is in an active state, inactive state, as long as they are pigmented, black pigmented materials, anything that's not will not absorb it, and hence you will not get any, uh, any results. ND YAG is a wonderful uh, laser in that it is very transparent to gingival tissue. Approximately 95% of the laser light is transparent and 5% is absorbed, so that gives you high selectivity. So why do you think uh, the ND YAG or the Millennium is uh, very effective? The reason it's effective is that these bacteria, as Dr. Nordquist says in his um, soon to be published book, requires a quorum of factors so that the spirochetes can survive. Without the factors, they do not like the environment, whatever the environment they exist in. So by disrupting some factors, we can effectively neutralize their ability to cause uh, other problems in implants and also gum disease. Per pocket that pumps me three to four millimeters depth super energy, the time approximately per surface buckle or ling will be approximately 15 seconds. And essentially the motion is it's going to be literally like a first year dental school where we're learning to probe the tissues. And you can see the popping energy, popping, that's just the laser energy as I go underneath it and try to kill everything. So rule of thumb, never keep the laser in any situation, any spot at, uh, at one time. Leave it a little, I'm walking a little. So that's all you try to do just again as we're doing it. Every time this laser here has a timer of 15 seconds that I've set to. And when the time is up, it just automatically turns off. Okay, what we did is uh, after we got done with the ND egg, uh, we went back to the same lingual uh, sulcuses to get bacteria. And what we have now is uh, red blood cells because it did cause some bleeding. And uh, there's a what we call a spirus spore right here, but there's no active bacteria that we can see in this sample. So even though the spirochetes seem to be invisible to this ND YAG, to 
through the cover slit, when we actually go into the gingival sulcus for some reason, uh, it obliterates almost everything, but again, we can think these are our spores here. I don't know if it left that behind, but there's no viable bacteria whatsoever. Here's an interesting bug that we found after we got done with the NDA. It's very interesting. It's, um, it's almost looked like a woven pattern. It's dead, obviously, but it has dark, almost like figure eights that run through that organism. So even our treatment can miss some of the spirochetes. Yeah, and it, it is possible we stunned them and then now they're just kind of coming back to life, at least a few of them. Or these could be um, super gingival that were not affected by the thermal, so they still could not um, be in existence. Yeah. But there they are, and so we do still have some uh, spirochetes at the end of treatment. What this demonstration shows maybe possibly two, so two answers to the questions. Why do we not see any viable um, bacteria, pretty much any sort, be it rods, cone, rods, spirochetes, or even cocci, is that possibly the bacteria themselves are very heat sensitive. And even though it's an ND YAG, we are generating some thermal energy, but the laser is set at such a, a way so that even it's a very, very high energy pulse, but we give enough relaxation time between pulses so that the body can absorb the thermal effects of it so that we do not get a tremendous temperature rise in the tissue. So the physiology is that the, uh, the patient or the host will remain viable. But however, localized, the bacteria may be very sensitive to it and they get um, killed. Well, thanks for watching our demonstration. I want to thank Dr. Lin for his participation. And just to sum this up, even though the spirochetes seem to be transparent to the ND YAG, it still was effective and for the most part eliminating the viable spirochetes. Even though we did find some viable spirochetes, it's possible that we missed those during the treatment. But the ND egg has proven to be very um, effective in treating periodontal disease. And we did find spores as a result of treatment. And actually went back a week later and did a check and there was only uh, spores in the field, no viable bacteria at all. But as far as we can tell, the spores are there now for future, uh, waiting for the right environment for the future. Okay, thank you very much for watching our experiment.